Hey, thanks for waiting so long and patiently awaiting the second half of my knife collection video. The first half was thrilling, enthralling, dramatic. I hope you watched it. The next half won't disappoint. Now again with my affection for simplicity, I recently, this is my most recent purchase in, in January, I bought this knife. This was one of the last Masashi Koi Santoku that we had. He, he's switching up and he's, he's making a new line as he is sort of developing his, his blacksmiths. Uh, but I really love this knife. It's a, it's a VS1 tool steel. He really likes this kind of steel. Uh, he gets it incredibly hard. It actually goes about 64 Rockwell. But this knife is super light, very simple, 165 millimeters. It's pretty, it's pretty short. I typically like knives that are a little bit longer, but just doing small work around the house, which is a weird thing to say because it's only ever in my kitchen. It's a really manageable size. It's really comfortable. If you're not comfortable with a bigger knife, this one is super great. Uh, now this, this is my one and only Nakiri that I own. This is really cool. It, Kevin sold this to me years ago, and I think it's a, Hiromoto or Masatomo maybe. In fact, this knife maker doesn't even exist anymore. And this was one of my first fully carbon steel knives. And when you start using a first carbon steel knife, it gets a little bit to get used to. You're kind of shocked about the rusting. This knife is consistently still one of the sharpest knives I own. And it's got this great grind to it where it's thinner at the spine. So it's almost like a diamond shaped grind on it. Uh, I love cutting with this knife, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, I distinctly remember when I first got it, I bought it at Knifeware, ran off to work, immediately brunoised a liter of shallots. Uh, shallots are not the cheapest thing. Brunoising a liter is, uh, takes a bit of time. And then once I was done, I remember the chef looking at me asking what I did to those shallots because they had all turned brown. Because with carbon steel, not only does the knife rust, but that will transfer, that oxide transfers to food and something like an onion or fennel will actually get kind of a darker, sort of faded brown color. Uh, so I was a bit shocked by it, but nonetheless, absolutely uh, one of my favorite knives. These are my big guys. These are the big knives, the big boys. They come out uh, if I'm gonna cook a lot of stuff or if I got something big to cut. Uh, this Takeda 270, well it's 260. It's really supposed to be 240 mil. It's a big, thin knife. I love slicing bacon with this knife. It's so great. It's crazy. It's really thin. It's Algami Super. It's one of the original ones. It's clad with stainless steel. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's super light. I remember when I bought it, I was actually receiving an order. I was putting these away. I was putting them in the case and I was holding this knife and I just didn't put it away. It just, it felt so great in my hand that it, uh, it was mine. It was like my Harry Potter wand moment. Yeah, that's a fantastic blade. So, Next though is by far, this is by far one of my favorite knives. I use it all the time. And it's a 240 millimeter Morataka, blue number two. I got this at their house in Japan. They came to visit us here in Calgary and they engraved uh, delicious or in good taste on the knife. I, had, you know what? I put this knife up against so many other things and in a way it performed so much better. And what I like the most about it is how it feels when I cut food. I have a lot of control, it cuts really straight, it aims really nicely, it bites in really well. Arguably there's things that are better, that are thinner, harder, faster, whatever, but I love using this knife. I never really thought I'd buy a Japanese bread knife, but when this guy came along, uh, I, was, I, was, I was into it. I was an early adopter of the Japanese bread knife. Tiny little teeth, lots of them. They zip through a crusty loaf of sourdough like nobody's business. Also like the height of the blade, I like that it's a pretty stiff, rigid blade. I find a, a real flimsy, bendy bread knife super frustrating to use, especially if you want to cut your bread straight. I think I spent almost 300 bucks on this knife and it was really well worth it. And I've never needed to even consider sharpening it. This next one is my slicer. It's my big 270 millimeter. Uh, this is a special edition Koishi Sujihiki. What makes it special is they had polished off all of the Kurochi finish on the blade. One thing I like about these Masakagi Sujihikis is they're taller. Y you can really double these up as a big chef's knife. If I'm plowing through a whole bunch of big onions, this is a great knife to use. Carving, cutting steaks. Yeah, big stuff. Super nice knife. And Koishis are just amazing at holding their edge. They're so good at staying sharp. Uh, they're really impressive on that. Now next, I bought this knife when Masashi came to visit us one time. He and I went and did an event down in Lethbridge and uh, I bought this knife from him there. It's a, it's a 240 millimeter 
uh, Yanagiba, so it's a single bevel knife. And whenever I have an excuse to slice fish, I, I absolutely use this knife because it's an absolute joy to use. It just floats through food. It makes me kind of chuckle every time I use it, how sharp it is and how nicely put together it is. And he's also engraved it for me too. Kind of nice little touch really personalizes you know it's really definitely my knife right this is a funny knife and this is a knife i had back in restaurant days and something that uh, some knife nerds don't really understand but this is just a single piece of steel it's not the san mai it's not got hammering it's not got damascus it's not even that hard it's a molybdenum steel it's softer uh, this knife can take an absolute beating and you can rub it on the back of a plate and make it sharp again susan makes incredibly nice knives kind of a fun handle if i lent you the honosuke and you're watching this video i would really appreciate it back uh, i don't know where it went i know i lent it to somebody but it's gone pretty upset by it however it's a really thin knife it's really great for slicing you can carve a roast with it you can slice a duck breast that you've cooked with it. You can clean meat. I, this is a really, really useful size of knife. You see it in a lot of professionals' kits. But again, that single piece of steel, it's a little softer. It doesn't hold its edge quite the same. Also, it doesn't chip very easily. And you can put another edge back on it absolutely easily. Um, you don't need to be a pro at sharpening to do it. So really, really useful, functional tool. Now, this one is another great knife. A few years ago, I got to go back to Japan. It was my second trip. And something I really enjoy about this knife is it's a Moritaka Kiritsuki 210 millimeter Guto with the Ishime finish and the Algami Super Core with this beautiful cedar handle. You might ask, how does that knife exist? I've never seen that knife before. Well, it exists because I was standing in their workshop and they said, hey, you want to make a knife? And I said, you bet I do. And they said, what do you want? And I said, I want a 210 millimeter Kiritsuki with the Ishime finish with Algami Super Core and the cedar handle. And they said, all right, it was great. I mean, I got to stand there and help them hammer it out. Basically, I stood in front of the spring hammer. They helped me out and they, they were obviously heating up the steel, pulling it out, sticking it underneath. Uh, and then when I left, they'd put these three little dots in the side of it here in the tang. And he said, don't worry, we'll finish it and send it to you. So what they probably did was uh, just absolutely remake the entire knife and then send me a good version of it. But uh, I love this knife. It's my it's my favorite little Kiritsuki. I really love their Guto. This, this Ishime finish is absolutely one of the best finishes on a knife because the small, fine little texture, your knife never binds up nothing really sticks to it there's very very little resistance from that surface of the blade when you're cutting which i think just makes it an exceptional knife is a takeda menkiri there's a great story this is a great garage sale find kevin was at takeda's forge in nimi japan takeda had a box of these sitting in the corner and kevin kind of kicked it and said hey what's the deal with this and he's like ah that's nothing i tried making those knives about a decade ago no one wants them, they're crap. So Kevin being Kevin said, put handles on them. That's what our garage sale is about. So sure enough, I bought one. It's a terrible cleaver because it's not a cleaver. It's Algami Super, so this deal's way too hard. It's a big noodle knife. You know, I gotta take this into Colin, who works at our Calgary shop, who loves the Chuka Bocho. He loves this style of knife. I'll let him handle that. He'll, he'll probably have fun with it. Next, this is probably the crown jewel of my collection. This is my Takamura. Hanna 210 millimeter Guto. Dun, 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 dun. This knife is amazing. It is so thin, it is so sharp, it is so much finesse. It is more delicate than I am. I don't often use this knife. Um, this thing is very sought after. I think there's 300 people on our waiting list looking for this knife. We rarely ever see them. It's so cool. It's absolutely such a beautiful knife. It's like having a, to me, this is like having a Hermes bag, you know? This is the kind of luxury that I like. This knife is a Mac Mighty 200 millimeter Guto. I spent hours and hours and hours working with this knife. It was a real durable knife. It's basically spent now. You look how much it's been sharpened. It's right up to those Grantons. You, you can't even sharpen it anymore, it's too fat. Uh, it was just a very dependable knife. Mac made a great knife. I really still uh, enjoy having this knife around. It's sentimental at this point, I, I never use it. Just like this, uh, this is a cool knife. This is a Sabatier vegetable knife. Yeah, this is a French Nakiri. And I bought this probably in 1999 when I was on a, a cooking exchange in Paris. This is one of the things I bought when I maxed out my credit card, buying 
uh, kitchen equipment there. I'd actually sharpened this at one point flat to the stone. I made it super, super sharp, but that's where I learned soft steel doesn't hold an edge. I could actually bend the edge over with my thumbnail. I'm so happy to have found Japanese kitchen knives. They're harder steel. They hold that thinness and that sharpness for a much longer time, albeit a bit more brittle. You can actually make a knife out of a knife that thin. Uh, this one is another sabatier. This is what I started cooking with. Uh, I believe this sabatier actually belonged to my grandfather who, uh, who was not a cook, but loved cooking and, and loved good tools. So I keep this one around. I don't use it often. I never really want to wear this one out because it's quite cool. Last but not least, a very rare Takeda. I don't think he even considers making them anymore. The amount of time and effort that goes into it is a lot. It's a lot. It's very difficult to make an ax. Uh, and so I've had this Takeda ax for a while. I know a few of us have them. It's insane how sharp it is. It's like chop chopping wood with a shotgun was the best term I'd ever heard about. It. This is an Algami Super Axe. This is super blue carbon steel in an axe. This is like a 64, 65 Rockwell. It's crazy. This thing is so sharp. Uh, and it just absolutely blazes through anything you swing at it. For the purposes of insurance, I would say that my collection is probably seven or eight thousand dollars. I once glanced at my customer profile at Knifeware and it was big. It was big. I bought a lot of knives for people. I bought a lot of gifts. I bought a lot of stuff that aren't knives. And there's a lot of knives here that I bought before I was a customer and that was being kind of tracked. I would say that Knifeware is hands down the most expensive job I have ever had. And I love every one of them. Like my good friend Rob used to say, Rob worked with us at Knifeware at the beginning. He would always say, as a person who likes cooking, when it comes to knives and you know, how many knives do you really need? Rob would always say, you only need one more. This is a YouTube video. Like it, subscribe it, hit the bell, ding dong, do it, thanks. If you wanna learn how to build a knife collection, check out this next video.